And we are seeking $5 million in exchange for 50% of our company. It's 2015, and this man is 1950s pop star Pat Boone, a man whose Wikipedia page is a bit of a wild ride. He's here on Shark Tank to demonstrate a revolutionary new technology. Now, you'll be forgiven for thinking this isn't a serious bit of engineering, and he kind of fumbles the pitch. But the idea he's here to talk about is actually quite interesting. He's demonstrating a car which runs entirely on air. Just give it a tank of compressed air and it can allegedly drive 220 kilometers and produces only a cold breeze by way of emissions. Now what's interesting about this is it's not just a render. They've built real versions and they've driven it on real roads. Today, we're gonna unpack the story of the air car. We wanna know where did it come from? How does it work? Is it any good? And can we trust French people? Most importantly, we're gonna give it a completely objective rating. Welcome to Invention Review. This story starts with a man called Guy Negre. As with the air car itself, the facts about Guy Negre's life are a little bit tricky to pin down. He graduated in philosophy, and sometimes he's cited as having worked for Renault as a Formula One engineer, although it seems more possible that he actually worked on advertising and developed his own engines as a hobbyist on the side. What we do know for sure is that Negre became well known for his interesting, if flawed design of Formula One engine, which he managed to get tested with a struggling backmarker Formula One team in 1989. The engine never saw any use in Formula One, but was tried in one 24 hours of Le Mans car, which unfortunately never started and so failed to ever qualify. Now, despite this spotty history in F1, Guy Negre did take one important thing from the sport, and this was the power of compressed air. Now, compressed air pops up in a lot of places in Formula One. They use it to start the engines. They use it for the old in the pit lane and a lot of other things besides. So with this in his mind, he decided to start a whole new venture, enlisting the help of his son, Cyril. For some reason, he doesn't get the French pronunciation. Sorry, Cyril, who was an engineer at Bugatti at the time. The two of them founded a new enterprise looking to make their dream a reality and create the air car. So what's the big idea with the air car? Well, Essentially, instead of having petrol or instead of using batteries, we store all the energy just as a load of compressed air in a tank. And that air kind of slowly whoopee cushions out to spin a motor. And that's pretty much it. As Pat Boone described it. It takes off. Cheers, Pat. So Necker's company, MDI, have given us a series of designs and prototypes over the years, touting the fact that all they produce by way of emissions is cold air. You can charge it either electrically, so using an internal compressor that fills up the tank, or using air pumps similar to the ones that we use for tires. And they claim various different speeds depending on the model, but it's usually around sort of 80 kilometers an hour, and different ranges between about 120 to 200 kilometers. It's not a speed demon, but it should be simple and cheap enough to make them run. And in theory, it's perfect for nipping around cities or doing last mile deliveries. Also, look at it. It's got the most European design possible. It's like the anti-cyber truck. Okay, sick then. Air car. I mean, there's loads of weird AI flat earth videos on YouTube talking about how big tech just doesn't want you to know that this exists. And uh, it's, you know, it's coming around the corner and it's going to make every other type of car irrelevant. AirPod 2.0 offers an affordable, green, and entirely funky alternative, setting it apart from all previous offerings. It must be good then. So when can I get my hands on it? Well, it's coming out in 2002. Okay, well, not 2002, but it's coming out in 2003. Okay, well, it, I mean, it had problems with ice in the tubes, but 2008, for real, it's coming out in 2008. Well, okay, we missed 2008. It's coming out in 2010. KLM and Air France are going to use it in the airports. It's, it's coming out. Okay, well, that's going to happen. But 2012, 2012 is coming out. Tata are going to bring it out in the air. It's going to be great. Okay, well, that, okay, that didn't happen. Technically, that also didn't happen. But 2020, they promised. They got a new version. It's coming out. It's going to Hawaii. It's going to be great. Okay, well, that's going to be just one more year. Bro. Just one more year. Honestly, there's probably a pretty good reason that we've spent two decades waiting for this to be commercialized. And it's always coming out next year. And that reason is, simply put, it probably just doesn't work. Or it technically works. You can drive it, but. The numbers that they give us are sus, to say the least. Take a look at this graph. It shows us how much energy we get out per kilogram of different ways of fueling our car. So the highest up is petrol. One kilogram of petrol gives us loads of energy. That's why a petrol car can have a pretty small tank and still have a big range. Next down, we have the batteries that we use in electric cars. Now you see that these can store a lot less power per kilogram, and that's why electric cars are heavier and generally have less range than similar petrol cars. 
but the upside is these type of cars are a lot more efficient. So we have less power, but we kind of use it better. The last one here is compressed air. At this kind of pressure, compressed air just doesn't store much energy at all per kilogram. The upshot of this is that even with big tanks, air cars don't really have enough energy to go particularly far or fast. That's why they're so small and they only have about one ninth the horsepower of say a Fiat 500, for example. But I see you, you're thinking, okay, the energy density, it's not super far off electric vehicles. Why can't we just whack a load of tanks in there and we have a similar situation to a Tesla or whatever, a heavy car, but it kind of works out. And the thing is, it turns out that compressed air cars have a big problem that electric vehicles just don't have. Imagine we have some electricity from the grid. For an electric car, we use that electricity to charge a battery, which wastes about 10% of that power as heat. We then use the remaining power from the battery to drive a motor, which wastes another 15%, again, mostly as heat. So overall, we end up with a car that has efficiency from the plug to the wheels of around 75%. I, we use about three quarters of the power that we've paid for to actually go forward. For a compressed air car, we use that power first to, well, compress air, which wastes about half the energy we pay for already, just given off as heat. When we need to use it, the air is expanded before it gets to the motor, wasting about another 30%. And then the motor itself wastes about 60% of the energy available to it. Combining these, the compressed air car is only about 15% efficient, i.e. for the same amount of power in, we get five times as much power to the wheels in an electric car that we do in a compressed air car. So for both of these reasons, engineers that have gone through the numbers properly and estimated the range have come up with way, way lower numbers than the sort of numbers that are claimed for the air car. And it's not like, oh, we can make a slightly better motor or we can just compress the air a bit more and get around these problems. It's pretty much just physics in the way. You're never going to be able to compress or expand air without wasting a load of energy. There's not really a way around that. And in fact, depending on how the electricity is generated, where you're filling up the car, this could actually produce more carbon than a normal petrol car. No one tell Pat Boone, he'll be devastated. Because of that, I'm out. But hey, there must be some benefits, right? There must be some reason why people have spent a load of money on this. And there are, there is one big benefit that compressed air has that is arguably electric vehicles biggest weakness or certainly one of them. And that is that we don't have to deal with a battery. Now batteries bring a lot of problems, especially big ones for cars. They're a pain to make, they use limited resources, they can explode and they're difficult to get rid of. So if we can not have to use a battery and in fact just have a big old tank of air, well, even if it's less efficient, there might be a case for this. Although it probably is a limited case because we are spending lots of money and lots of time on batteries, especially for electric vehicles. The advantage that compressed air vehicles have either in the past or just about now in being simpler and avoiding having a battery, it's probably gonna be smaller and smaller in advantage as we go on. Okay, so it's the bit we've all been waiting for. How do we rate it? Well, let's start with innovation. Is this a new idea? No. I mean, Jules Verne wrote about it in the 1800s. It was gonna be the future of transport. Although to give credit where it's due, the guys who designed the air car have created a pretty cool engine for it. So. There's a little bit of little points for innovation here, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a four for innovation. Okay, but what about impact? And to give it a rating on this, I think we just have to ask one simple question, which is, when was the last time you saw someone driving an air car near you? It never made its way to Mexico. It never made its way to airports. It never made its way to um, anywhere that it was promised to go. So I'm gonna give for impact, it's gonna get a three out of 10. But let's not forget the last factor of play, and that's intrigue. Does it have that? Je ne sais quoi. Does it have that special summing about it that just, I don't know, that we love about wacky inventions? And I think in this case it does. I want to give some credit to Guy and Cyril Negre because sure they have probably massaged the numbers a bit, but I think they are genuinely doing this in earnest. They've put in real work to make it happen, even if there probably are too many fundamental flaws in the way of actually making this work. And also we have to factor in the fact that it looks like that, which is crazy. So it gets some points for that. It does get some points for that. For Intrigue, I'm giving this a seven out of 10. So that means for our very first, our inaugural rating, the air car, the compressed air vehicle, gets a 4.6 out of 10. 4.7, shit, rounding. I'm an engineer, I'm supposed to be able to round, aren't I? 4.7 out of 10. What do you think? Do you think that's fair? 
Do you think I've missed something important about the air car? Do you think that's way too much and it's just stupid and it looks like that and it's French? You decide. Please do drop a subscription. No one's ever said it like that ever. Please, <laughs> fuck's sake, unsubscribe. Please unsubscribe from me. It's too much, guys. I don't like it. These videos are for me and my mom, okay? I don't know why you guys are here. Unsubscribe. Don't hit the bell. Drop me a hate comment and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Love you, bye.